I am going to show you how to get a PDF into Excel. I've wanted to do that for a long time. I thought I wish I could do that. That's why I've got a way to do it. So this is what the PDF actually looks like. There's a little header section up here. It's related to accounts payable AP and accounts receivable AR. What I really want is these carryover section where it's got the payable carryover aged by month, the receivable carryover aged by month. You can see it goes back to 2017 and I want to get it by year. So I know that in total I've got 1.4 million, but if I want to know how much of it relates to 2018, hard for me to tell with this PDF. So we'll go into Excel, go to the data tab, get data from file from PDF. Saved it down to my hard drive and it brings in everything in multiple tables. So it kind of split it up and it looked for sections. So this AP negative 48767.24, that's that very top section there, AP negative 48767.24. So it kind of breaks it up into a block. So we don't, we don't care about that section. That is the top right section we don't care about. That's just a header. And now this, this is what we wanted. So May 19, 17.75. May 19, 17.75. So that we definitely want. We'll take a look. This looks like something that we want too. It says page two now. So if we go back to the PDF itself. Once we get to page two, April 23, 198.98, 193, April 23, 198.98. So we need that one. And then this is just that total. So that's what we want to tie back to that one, four, two, five, one, one, four. That is the total, but we're not going to take it in. So we want this table and this table. We can select multiple items up here. So we'll grab the last table of page one and the first table of page two. Now, again, that would be a huge win. We could just load this and, you know, it looks like it formatted a little funny. There's these dollar signs here. We'll have it coming in multiple tables. It would still be a big improvement, but we can take it another step. So we'll go into this transform data. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to append this second page to the first page. So I'll go to the first page. I'll say append. What table do I want to append? Page two. So now page one didn't have these nulls in it before, but now that I did that append, it does. So. Now we just want to clean this up. So this column two, I don't need, right? It's just got dollar signs or nulls. So I'll remove it. This column five, just these dollar signs. I don't need remove this column seven. It's miscellaneous doesn't mean anything to me. Remove. And so now I've got numbers here and kind of dates here, but I want to take them into actual dates. So you can see the syntax for whatever reason is the first three of the month and then an apostrophe, although I do see a double apostrophe here and then the last two of the year. And it's the same thing over here. So we'll just kind of scroll down and make sure that that format stays consistent. And it looks like it does. So we'll go ahead, select column one, transform, replace values. I wanted to find that one that had two apostrophes and just give me one apostrophe like everything else so you can see that's right here in row nine press okay 
that row nine just has one apostrophe. Everything else looks the same. We can replace again. We'll find that apostrophe and I'm going to replace it with a space and then a 20. So I wanted to read the first three of the month space and then two zero and then the last two of the year. So that's how I'll get it to do that. Do the same exact thing on column four. I'll come in, replace values, find that comma, give me that space 20. Looks good. Now I can rename these if looks like the left section is related to AP and the right section is related to AR. So I'll call this AP month. I'll call I'm just double clicking to make it an editable field. And then I'll call it AP amount. And I'll call column four AR month. And then I'll call column six AR amount. I want these to be actual dates. So I want it to be the last day of the month. I just want to be able to put a year formula on to age it by year. So I'm going to select AP month. I'll go into add column columns from example from selection i want it to add a column based off of what it, the syntax that it sees in this ap month column so i'm just going to start typing 5 31 and excel has realized hey you probably want the end of the month from the ap month and that is exactly what i want so kind of previews everything here so september 2019 it wants to return 9 30 2019 great i like it i'll say okay so now i'll call this ap date and then i'll move it over to the left and i don't need this month anymore so i can remove it and you see this ap date it's smart enough it, it's a basically a fixed value it was built off of that AP month, but it the AP month doesn't have to be there for it to retain its value. So we'll do the same thing. We'll highlight AR month. We'll add the column from example from selection. See the first one is May of 2017. So again, I'll start to put in 530. There it knows. Last of the month from AR month. And Check one, April 21, 4, 30, 2021, great. Do the same thing. I'll drag it to the left of the amount and I will remove this column that I don't like the format of. So now this is something that I can very easily work with in Excel. I'll go to the home tab, close and load. This was just the sheet that was open for, by default when I opened Excel. You can see right here, table four, page one has 113 rows loaded. Table five only has 39. That is page two. So I'm just gonna hide that. And then I can rename this PDF to Excel. From here, I can do whatever I want. I can call, 18 months and i can say equals year now it automatically comes through the table which is great so this formula will just go all the way down and then i can look at ar which i call that year not month so ap year and then ar year i'll just point back to the ar column and now I can grab this, put it out here, remove duplicates. I don't need the 1990 or the 1900, I guess, actually. That's just coming through for the nulls over here. What it defaults to and filter this so it actually is in chronological order even though they didn't input it in chronological order 
I can get it out here in my little summary. Then I'll do AP amount, AR year, I'll do AR amount, and I'll do a net amount. Quick sum if, if the AP year is that, give me the AP amount. AR year should be the same. We can just double check. We ignored that. So we got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So we got 17 to 23 inclusive, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So yep, the years are exactly the same. So I'll just paste over. Just do another quick sum if I want to look at an AR year. If it's equal to that, then give me the AR amount. That down the net, I'll just sum up AP and AR. And then right here, I can sum these guys up. Summary for each one. Format these real quick. And there you can see now I've got my aging by year. So I can say, oh, three, four grand relates to all the way back to 2017. There's over 50 grand from 2018 and 2019 combined. And in total, I've got this 1425114. Which, with any luck at all, balances back here. One, four, two, five, one, one, four point five three. So I hope that helps when you have to deal with PDFs.